Subhash, it's only been in the last few decades that modern cosmology really understands the length of this universe and the extent of the size of this universe. Beginning of the 20th century, this was really not known. The claim is made that Vedic philosophy and the Vedic texts going back thousands of years really understood this prior. Is that right? And I'd like real justification. One must start with what is the difference between the Vedic and the later Hindu view. The Vedic texts are the texts which are maybe three or four or five thousand years old. And what is normally called the Hindu view is based on the practices became, which became a part of the general Indian communities, say about two thousand years ago. But in my own view, the uh, later Hindu view is not all that different from the Vedic view. It only sort of enlarges and embellishes uh, what is the essentials uh, within the Vedic view. Now, in about, about 2,000 years ago, there were these texts uh, which are really like encyclopedias that were written in India, which are called the Puranas. And these Puranas also have a section on creation and on astronomy. It's in those sections that the life of the current creation was uh, addressed. And it's then, or it's there, that it's stated that this particular cycle of creation occurred or, or began about 12 or 13 billion years ago. Now, how do they represent that? Number? Okay. Now, well, how, how that was done was through various cycles. You have, you have the year, then you have uh, 10,000 years, then you have many other repetitions of it. And it was viewed as the day of Brahma. In this particular conception in the Puranas, the creation was attributed to the god Brahma. And then you had the god Vishnu who uh, upheld the universe in the cycle of creation and the god Shiva who sort of destroyed it. But it's a kind of a simplistic view for children. And the uh, life of the creation cycle was the day of Brahma. So during the day of Brahma, everything is alive. And then Brahma sleeps for a certain period of time. Then everything is gone, become extinct. And then it comes alive again. And, and so on. And so they were bigger and bigger cycles. So in, in the actual system that you... you come up with a number that's close to the 14 approximately billion years that this universe has existed as we now understand it. Um, how many different multiplications of cycles do you have to get to get to that number? I mean, what's, what's the sequence? Well, I, I can't give you the details of the sequence, but it's a part of the uh, I mean, popular, I mean, popular understanding. Are there mul how many parts do you have? Is it like uh, five or 10 or 100? I mean, how many parts do you have that get you to that number of 14 billion? There were uh, sub-ages. There is this big yeah, age, yeah. and then there are sub-ages. And, and then there are subs of those ages. But this is not the only surprising number that we have associated with the cosmos. There are two others. Yeah. For example, in the same Puranas, which is at least 1,500 years old, there is the distance to the sun. And the distance to the sun has a value which is almost exactly equal to the current estimate of the distance to the sun from the Earth. And then it... How is that, how is that stated specifically? It's stated so many billions of miles in, in a unit, which is a yojana. And yojana is about nine miles. Oh, okay. and, and that distance was uh, described in terms of subunits going all the way down to very small lengths. So we have an entire system of, um, of, of uh, looking at weights, measurements, which uh, tells us absolutely clearly what the distance length okay. was. What's the third? And the third is the speed of light. Uh, now, this also comes up uh, almost without any context. And although in many of the earlier texts it's stated that uh, light is uh, like uh, particles, stream of particles, and therefore it was sort of understood that there's got to be a speed with it. But 
in a commentary by the polymath who was also the prime minister in the court of the Vijayanagar Empire in the late 14th century, he mentions a specific speed in talking about the sun. And it's not quite clear whether he's talking about the speed of the sun or the speed of the rays that emanate from the sun. And when you, and it's in terms of two well-defined units. And when you convert them into modern units, it's almost precisely equal to the speed of the light. Now, you've given me three numbers. You've given me an age of the universe, you've given me a distance to the sun, and you've given me the speed of light. I can understand how ancient peoples could come up with a distance to the sun con conceivably through, um, through use of trigonometry. I mean, that's, that's conceivable. I cannot conceive under any condition how they could come up with the age of the universe or the speed of light. Right. The age of the universe and speed of light, if one were to make uh, or try to make sense of it, one could only see these as uh, coincidences. That here people were speculating on longer and longer periods because uh, you, if you look at the motion of the sun and the moon, which was at the basis of the ritual during the Vedic times, you had various, uh, um, various festivals or various observances which occurred based on how the sun, uh, the motions of the two uh, are not, uh, do not occur at the same time because the solar year is 365 days, the lunar year is only 354 days, there is a difference of 11 days and a fraction mm -hmm. and it sort of builds up. Now, and then if you look at the motion of the planets also, that creates further complications. And so one way of looking at it was that the Vedic thinkers were trying to see how do we come by a number where all of this can be put into some kind of a commensurate whole. And that could have been the basis of how they came by this very large number, which is the age of the universe, which turns out to be uh, coincidentally equal to the number that is accepted right now. I can't right accept now. that that's a coincidence. It, it, it would be if you had you know, a, a, a 500 different people giving different estimates and you're picking the one that's closest. I mean, that's an explanation that I could accept. There are lots of them and one of them happened to be right. Uh, and that's the one you're telling me. But that's not what you're saying. No, no. You're saying that the one that's given, or the one that's predominantly given, in both cases, speed of light, age of the universe, is correct. Yeah. I can't accept that that's a coincidence. That's either a, uh, a falsification of history, or reading back into it what you want to see, or picking a text that you want. Uh, but if that's not the case, then, you know, I can't see that being as a coincidence. There has to be some other explanation. The, the, the natural explanation would be that this is a false reading of the text or an artificial reading or, or, or a, 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 a self-selection of what you'd like to make sense. No, that, that's not uh, the reading at all. It is a single reading. In all of these Puranas, the distance to the sun is yeah. more or less this accurate. This is the sun I can accept yeah. because yeah. The, the, that can, you can get with, with some sort of, and the Greeks did something like that. It may not be perfectly accurate, but through triangulation, right. you know, right. that's when I can, I can it's, it's terrific. It's a brilliant move for right. sure, but that is understandable scientifically. The other two are not. Well, uh, I, I started with exactly the position <laughs> that you have when I looked at the claim about the speed of light because I wasn't aware of it myself that people had sort of uh, talked about it. And then I was able to provide an explanation within the framework of astronomy of the day where this number would have made sense. Because at that time there was a conception that here is the, the earth or the sun at the center because there were both these thoughts uh, which were uh, discussed in the uh, Indian literature. And then there were these uh, uh, island universes around them. So it, the whole solar system was viewed to have a certain size and the speed of light, if you use that, then that was uh, the size of the system for which the rays of light would have been able to cross mm. this entire space within 24 hours. So that is my uh, take on it, that maybe this is how, if this number which flashed in the mind of a sage and he was convinced that this was the right number, then he, he uh, tried 
to convince that this made sense because sometimes we have ideas which uh, upon further reflection turn out to be wrong. He was able to convince himself that indeed it was not at variance with the knowledge of the solar system that he took to be correct at that time. Although that model of the solar system that was taken to be the correct one is not correct. Exactly. But so from that perspective, it is a kind of a coincidence. But on the other hand, if one way to step back and say that all creativity is holding on or grabbing on to some of these forms or pieces of knowledge in the Platonic sense, and it's true not only of the Vedic sages, but also true of modern man, modern scientist, modern artist, or even the business person who sees a new opportunity in a certain sense, or a new uh, framework. And if one were to accept that, then this would tell us that these forms are not just shapes they could even be associated with numbers. And that is a very radical idea, because if that is indeed true, if it's much more than a coincidence, then, then what else is possible for one to know? One doesn't know.